So with that, I'm going to hand over to um, Associate Professor Paul Gao, who is from the WH Bryant Mineral Research Center, who is going to talk to us about processing options for Queensland REE deposits. All right, thank you very much, Lisa. We turned on here, yes. Um, yeah, look, I'm, I'm going to talk about our project looking at, uh, at novel techniques for uh, processing rare earth element deposits. And it's been interesting seeing a couple of the themes today um, uh, that, that tie in, in directly with why this project is, is running. And, and one of those we saw from a couple of presentations, I think it was both in uh, Nick Baton's and also uh, Eleanor's presentations, we saw an estimate of rare earth elements and what the requirement is, what the demand is, is forecast to be uh, relative to current production, which I think both of them from, from what I understood were sort of around between, between 100 to 400% uh, of current production. So it's, um, it's, it's certainly something that's, that's, that's gonna be needed in, in volume and, and why rare earths are important for the, I, I hadn't quite heard the term before of ETM, energy transition metals, is that, for example, rare earths are, um, are used in, in high-tech applications. And uh, for example, they're used to make um, magnets that can work at very high temperatures that you can put into wind turbines, for example. So, so there is that very strong demand. So, so that, that's one of, one of the ration, rationale for, um, for the project is demand. Uh, the other rationale is that, um, sorry, I keep referencing your talk, uh, Eleanor, but um, when, when you had that, uh, that matrix up of, of blue and red and the uh, ESG risks, if you looked at rare earths, you would see that it was waste and uh, water seemed to be the two red items, okay? So, so that when, when you look at, uh, at, at rare earths production, um, waste and water specifically uh, are, are relatively harsh and, and you find that rare earth production, and, and it's not so much in the mining, of course, but in, in the processing and extraction of the elements, is that you, you have a lot of byproducts that we'll talk about lately and energy use uh, that's particularly high, um, which are the sort of things that obviously we don't, um, we don't want. Okay. Um, so so I'll, I'll just go through this briefly. The project started uh, earlier this year. We had a bit of a hiccup with, with COVID um, in, in terms of getting into the field to, to get a lot of samples, but uh, we were helped out by the geological survey to a certain extent. So that was good. So we sort of got on top of that. So, so we ran a desktop review to look at, um, at the rare earth deposits in, in, in Queensland. And, and why I should say that is, is because the, the project is co-funded by the DNRME, which is the Department of Natural Resources and Mines here in Queensland uh, and the Complex Ore Bodies uh, Program. Uh, so we've had a very strong focus on Queensland rare earth resources uh, and how you could potentially uh, process those. So, so we ran a big desktop review, look, trying to get ourselves up the curve, I guess, in terms of rare earth uh, elements. Uh, and then we ran some, uh, some sample acquisition from various places. And then we've sort of started the lab, lab test work. We're a little bit behind where we wanted to be because of the, the delayed sample acquisition, but, um, but really starting to kick along now. Um, so to, to this, this diagram is, is purely to summarize. So the diagram on the right with all the boxes and the wires is not really to be digested but it's just to point out how uh, difficult the flow sheets are for, um, for rare earth processing. Um, so typically you work through beneficiation um, and then you, you um, extraction by hydrometallurgical methods that typically give you rare earth salts and then you need to then separate the rare earths. And, and it, it is a difficult issue because the, the, the individual elements have such similar properties that they are uh, difficult to, to separate. Um, so this, this is a plot um, and, and what you see on the left is, is various types of, of leaches um, because the, the typical extraction of rare earths at the moment is using, using leaches of various temperatures with various uh, acids. Um, and so on the left is the, the, the types of, um, of leaches, base, acid, chlorination and ion exchange. Uh, and what you do is you then roast your rare earth minerals and then you leach your rare earth minerals, okay? Um, and what I've done is, is color this plot up in essentially um, temperature, you'll see there. So that the blue plots are um, a, a sort of less than 40 or 40 to 100 degrees. 
So, so that's sort of where, where you want to be operating in if you're thinking in terms of uh, using energy and reducing your energy consumption. But you will see that it goes up to the dark reds, which are uh, greater than 900 degrees. So, so the typical current processing of rare earth um, minerals and ores is, is very temperature and, uh, and acid dependent. And that's via um, hydrometallurgical processes, okay? So what we're doing is looking at alternative technologies that may provide lower energy paths and also uh, less, less waste or harmful products coming out of your processing. So we're running with, with three streams. And I should highlight that you know, we've been talking about cross, um, I guess, uh, cross department and, and centre work. And, and this project, it's funded by the Geological Survey of Queensland, who we've had a lot of interaction with. Uh, but it also includes the uh, Department of Chemical Engineering, which uh, uh, James Vaughan and um, Wing Fu have been working there. It includes the School of Earth um, and Environmental Sciences, uh, particularly with Gordon Southern, Emma Gagan and Alan Levitt. Uh, and it includes the uh, Centre for Mine Land Rehabilitation with uh, Peter Erskine and Anthony Band and, and Philip, who you heard talking about Friday morning mining this morning, as well as uh, various uh, of us in, in the BRC. So it's it's a it's a really uh, very collaborative project, and and why it has to be is because we're focusing on these three areas. Okay, so the first, and we've heard a bit about this today, is microbiological uh, extraction of rare earths. The second is phyto extraction uh, that you heard Philip talk about this morning with particular reference to zinc um, and, and um, thallium it was, and it's also very useful for, uh, for nickel as well, but we're looking at it for rare earth processing. And then the third strand is, is hydrometallurgy. So that uh, it's currently the standard route, but we, we are looking at, at um, more, more novel, um, non-conventional hydromet uh, methods. Um, just briefly, this is, this is uh, where the deposits are uh, currently known resources of rare earths sit uh, in Queensland. And there are quite a few different styles. There are SCARN and iron oxide copper gold, which is what you would sort of call, I guess, hard rock type uh, deposits. There are laterites, which is essentially weathered material near surface, which you would call soft rock, I guess. There are uh, phosphorites as well, which are, are relatively soft. We were just at Phosphate Hill Mine uh, yesterday and they they uh, actually don't even need to blast so they're, they're just mining uh, by by shovel um, and then there are a couple of other i guess lesser um, types that are that are around in queensland as well so the work in progress we've, we've been working up at um, mary kathleen and we've been working on a couple of elements we've we've been looking at the ore but um i, I guess what's more important is we've been looking at the tailings that are sitting up there and um, Anita Pabaka Fox is also doing a, doing a project looking at recommercialization of the, the Mary Kathleen tales, um, but, but we're looking more specifically at the, at the rare earths. So we've been doing a, a, a bunch of, this is some micro XRF images here from some, some more at, um, at Mary uh, Kathleen. Um, and, and why we've been doing that is to look at the mineralogy. So that if you understand the mineralogy, then you can start to think about, um, you know, you know, can you can you be acting on that with bio leaching? Um, what is your plant root viability if you're starting to think about um, phyto mining? Um, and, and then, so we've taken these samples and powdered them and started to to analyse them so that we can better understand, particularly the mineralogy and the elemental uh, associations. Um, now, the, the tailings up at, up at Mary Kathleen are, are a really inter interesting story. What happened was there was, there was uranium mining there. Uh, there were two phases, I think one in about the 60s and 70s and another in the 80s. And what happened was the uh, uranium mineral, uraninite, was essentially um, dissolved um, in their processing route and, and the uranium was extracted. But the rare earth remained in a mineral called alanite, which comprised a lot of the ore. Uh, and so that has all gone into the tailings. So that the rare earths are actually sitting in the um, in the tailings with the with the alanite. So we've been undertaking a set of um, of leaching, or well, the the Department of Chem Eng guys have been undertaking uh, James and Wing through a set of uh, preliminary leaches on those on those tailings. And the idea is, well, is there a way that we can approach them in in a very low impact way to extract those rare earths? And and the thesis was that. During the uranium processing, the rare earths were, were partly liberated 
And, and then when they've been put into the tailings and through the process route, those rare earths have attached themselves to the outside of the tailings. So the James and Wang Fu put, put um, some of those samples through, through a couple of leeches between um, 20 degrees and, and 120 degrees Celsius. And they found, for example, that they were getting about 70% of the rare earths into solution at, um, at, at um, 120 degrees for three hours in, in that leech. So there's some sort of promising, um, promising results that, that are saying you don't actually need to go and bake your alanites at 600 degrees C to get your rare earths out. If you're prepared to accept a little bit of lower recovery, for example, 70% or, or 60% instead of 90%, then you can do it at a much lower temperature. Um, the other, other thing we're doing at Mary Kathleen uh, that Gordon, um, Gordon Southern's leading is, is um, looking at, at bio leach potential on the tailings. So that what, um, what the guys have done is, is go out and, and sample the various biofilms. Um, you'll see them in these pictures here. They, these are actually where, where there are um, small, small um, water, water vents out of the tailings. So that they are, they are sampling the biofilms that that are living in those in those in those tailings, and then what they're going to do is put them into their columns. Well, they've actually done it is is to put them into their columns and then percolate um, per percolate um, um, water that that has been um, inoculated with some of those bugs through the column, and then then after you've you've done that for several months, you can then go and have a look and say, a what's happening to the mobility of your elements. But B, what's happening to the mineralogy of your of your uh, of your tailings? Is that being modified as well? So it's 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 basically a look look to say, well, is is there a potential to to tackle this rare earth element um, resource in a bioleach uh, in a bioleach way? And how that would work in practice, you would essentially dam and flood the tailings um, uh, and have the bioleach happening happening in in that um, flooded tailings dam. And then you would set up a chemical or biological precipitation trap on the on the outlet of that um, of that tailings. So it's 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 all very early days, but it's uh, it's it's incredibly um, interesting, and obviously it's 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 a long term look at, at getting to production. But but uh, you know it's worth investigating that you, you if you can do these types of processes without um, going the whole hog. Uh, the other thing we're doing is, uh, and this was done by the CMLR guys. Um, in, in July, they went up around um, Mary Kathleen. There are some other areas around there that are known to have rare earth uh, element mineralization. And they sampled all of the, um, all, all of the uh, vegetation there. Um, unfortunately, they didn't find a hyperaccumulator plant that was hyperaccumulating uh, rare earths, but they did find, um, I guess what they call a, um, I've forgotten the terminology, but it's, it's a mild, mild accumulator, sort of a tracer um, plant. Um, and and it was, it's quite interesting. So, for example, the other all of the plants that they that they sampled on this rare earth anomalous uh, area that has been tested by drilling and found found to contain rare earth mineralization had um, five ppm cerium in them. But um, there was one plant, um, Skyvola ovalifolia, which had 100 ppm cerium in it. So it's it's a 20 time, times enrichment on on the basis of the other other plants. So, so it's sort of early days, but they're starting to look at those plants. And what else is in their plan is to, to basically go down to the herbarium here in Brisbane, where, the, where there are uh, numerous plants, I, I think it's in the order of thousands of different species, et cetera. And they will then go and sample those plants and test those and see if any of those will then be rare earth accumulators. So it's, so it's, it's, it's sort of fascinating, um, fascinating work. Uh, the last thing we're focusing on is, is phosphate um, mineralization. And you'll, you'll see here, I can put the mouse. So this is the plot um, of some of the samples we got from Phosphate Hill. So, so the way the process works is they have their ore and that's these, these points up here. So you can see on, on the x-axis is, is their phosphate. So that's why, why they're the 25 to 30% phosphates, the ore. Uh, but they, they have between 800 to 1000 um, ppm of total rare earths. But, when they process, they get two other outputs, which are essentially their tailings. So, that, so they get their slimes, you'll see down here, and also their gypsum. And obviously they are lower in total rare earths, but, um, but there, there uh, is, is 3 million tons of slime sitting at surface out there at the moment and, and more than that of, of gypsum. 
So the guys, um, or, or well, the, the, the three streams, the, the, the phyto and the um, bio and the hydro are looking at, are there ways that we can take these lower grade, grade waste resources and extract rare earths from them in, in, a, uh, in a simple and effective way? Uh, and particularly cheaper in terms of operating cost and, and capital expenditure to build any plants. Um, we've also visited another, another higher grade uh, rare earth project out there called uh, Ardmore that I won't touch on. And the final, the final place we've been working is, is up, in, um, up in central coastal uh, Queensland. It's called the Peak Range Volcanics. It's a peralkaline uh, volcanic complex. And you might be able to see here, it, it outcrops as, as a couple of domes. Uh, there's, there's, there's two domes, this is called Clary's Dome. So we've had some samples taken from that. And it, it's, it's a very, um, it, in, in terms of rare earth ores, it's not particularly high, but it is, is rare earth enriched. Um, so, so and, and it's an enormous homogeneous uh, quantity of, of this rare earth rich material. So that, so that we've, we've taken those samples and we're uh, at the moment, we're just crushing them so that they can be used for um, some bio leach um, experiments uh, over at, um, at, at St. Lucia, as well as we're, we're doing some, um, some um, mineralogy and grade by, by size uh, work on those as well. So um, that's it. We're, we're just looking at, uh, so we've been basically looking at phosphorites and, um, and, and the, the Mary Kathleen tailings and, and scarns to date. Um, has been the focus. And, and now we're starting to look at these volcanics and, and these, these host of other types of deposits that, uh, that are sitting out around Queensland. We know they're rare earth anomalous, but it, it, explorers have, have not been looking for them, particularly A, because rare earths, I guess, has, is only now starting to be appreciated how it's going to fit into the new economy. But also there, there isn't a big awareness amongst explorers that, that says, well, if we discover a rare earth um, deposit, how are we going to process it? Or what sort of rare earth deposits should we be looking for that we know we're going to be able to process? So it's, the, the project is all, all part of that, I guess, um, capacity and, and knowledge building um, you know, with a focus in Queensland, but generally applicable, applicable um, globally. Um, so our immediate work plan, I won't touch on that. Um, it's just what, what we're going to be doing over the next year. So we'll hear about it in due course. Um, so I, I'll leave it at that. And, Crack open for any questions. Thanks, Lisa. Mm. Thank you, Paul. That was excellent timekeeping. Uh, so we do have time for a couple of questions. Um, Rick, is there anybody in the chat that has a question? No. Um, anyone from the lecture theater has a question? Rick has a question. I, I don't have a question for Paul. I have a question for you, or <laughs> or for or for Susanna, um, you know, because we were originally we, one of the things that we've been talking about is is um, or actually James Vaughn was saying, wouldn't it be was saying would it would be great if we could beneficiate somehow or concentrate the Mary Kathleen ores? That was before he had these results, but I, I just wonder what I've just I have no idea. Well, I mean, it sounds like the from those results, it sounds like a lot of the rare earths are, are on coatings rather than in in the actual minerals that, that only, you know, 30% or so or 20, 28 percent in, in alanite and the rest is in is coatings on minerals. And uh, do you know, is there any, any... Well, that's actually what makes some more beneficiable by flotation. Flotation is a surface-based uh, process. So if you do have an occurrence of these minerals that occur as coatings on mineral particles, then that actually improves the possibility of them being beneficiated or upgraded by flotation. I don't imagine we'll ever get to a point where we are with um, base metal sulfides where you can achieve sufficiently high grades um, to send them straight to a smelter. We would be able to achieve um, perhaps a substantive upgrade such that we can substantially reduce the cost of a leaching operation that they feed into. Um, but the coating is actually good news. That's, that's what I thought. I thought it would be because you're, you, you, as long as, unless it's, unless it's absolutely sort of like Vegemite over everything, you know, it's, if, if, if it's sort of selectively on some bits of the, you know, it, 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 I guess it leads to a different sort of characterization. Mm. So with some of the work that is, you know, we've got coming up in the rare space, uh, we are going to be looking at 
the protestability of these ores by flotation, and that's all be one of the things that we're looking at. Mm -hmm.